here my man Michael Fox. What's good, Mike? What's good with it? All right, so uh, how's your day going? Uh, pretty good, man. Like you know, just just been chilling, doing some work around the house, washing clothes, like you know, domestic stuff, regular stuff. Any gym work today, or was this an off day? No, I just take the I just take the day off, man. Um, you know, sometimes you gotta let, you just gotta let the body heal. You know, um, I'll be I'm right back at it Monday. Typically, I do a about an hour and a half workout on Sundays. That's normally on my chill day, that'd be the only thing I do for the day. But I decided, you know, today we're just going to chill, you know, catch up on some sleep, things like that, because I get up early throughout the week. So, you know, I'm just, you know, when you ask a lot of the body, you got to treat it, you got to treat it right, you know. True, true. Uh, how'd you get your start in boxing? Uh, when I was, um, when I was four years old, my brother, uh, Lantez Fox, uh, he he uh, he followed a couple of his uh, his buddies. Him, and my dad followed a couple of the football buddies to a, a boxing gym, and you know I tagged along. Um, you know, they went back they went back to play football and everything. We stayed in the boxing gym, and like since I was four years old, I've been I've been in a boxing gym. I was at that time I was young. I was just punching on bags. Nobody was really paying attention to me. I just was punching on bags and stuff, just um, just killing time while we were there. Punch, I guess my dad would let me punch myself out. And I just go to sleep at night, so it all worked out for everybody. What made you fall in love with? Uh, I just, I just, really, I just liked it. I just liked it for the simple fact that um, and I didn't fall in love into it with it probably until I got a little older. But I liked being able to say like you know, win or lose. You gotta own it, you know. What I mean, no, no one to blame, no one you really gotta share credit with, you know. And you know, you got football. You could say, man, if it wasn't for my blockers, I wouldn't have been able to score that touchdown. And if I didn't have a good quarterback, I wouldn't be able to catch the ball. Things like that, you know. Um, I like being able, to, just being able to. I like the accountability that it gave. I feel that's what made me fall in love with it. Like, at the end of the day, you have to, uh, uh, you have to execute. You know what I mean, and with that, you you take those, you you get the uh, whole, you get to hold that win very heavily. Of course, you got your team, your coach that prepare you and everything. You always are grateful for a good team, but at the end, at at, at the end of the, of the fight, at the end of the fight, you just have to, it, it's you, it's just you, you won, you 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 had to, you had to do everything, you had to make you had to make that uh you had to make that victory, you had you had to execute, you had to get your whatever your coach told you to do, you had to execute. Hi, bro. You coming off of probably the most controversial decision that I've ever seen in boxing, right? I'm talking about, like, you ain't got to say it, probably top three greatest robberies I've ever seen. Your last fight against, uh, I can't pronounce the guy's first name. Gabriel uh, Gab yeah, Gabriel Maestre. What, what was your thoughts on that fight? Oh, I mean, well... I mean, you could you could see in my face when they read the scores and when they announced them. You know, I was shocked at what I heard. You know, I, I they kept reading the scores. The first, like each score uh, got a little wider each time. Uh, the the, um, the in, in terms of how 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 the victory was. So the first one was close. The second one was a little wider. The third one was very wide. And, and when I heard that lad, the last two scores. Um, well, no, I, I figured all the scores were for me. But when I heard the last two scores. Especially the last, the third, the last four, it sounded, you know, it sounded more realistic to the fight I fought. You understand? I didn't. It was no way they had it, the last judge had a 117-110 for my Maestre, and to this day, I watched the fight a bunch of times. This fight is absurd. The score, the score was absurd, man. So like, I listen. I, I've let other people watch it. People, uh, people that have never seen boxing before, asking. Okay, so how'd you lose that fight? You know, what I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not crazy because I know like other, other, other fighters also said I won that fight. You know, I've seen guys like Tony, Tony Harrison was on Twitter. He said that was a robbery. Uh, Earl Spence um, actually reached out and said, "Man, I watched that fight. You was robbed." Um, Mar uh, Marcus Brown, uh, Dennis Douglin, Mama's Boy, uh, everybody, anybody that saw that fight, anybody that saw that fight, that. That, that was involved in boxing knew that I didn't lose that fight. You know, I watched it a bunch of times, even looking for something I could have done wrong. And there's always things you can do, win or lose. There's always something you can do to uh, to, to have made the fight better. 
But there's no way y'all telling me that he did. I did so many things. I made so many mistakes that he was able to get a, a win. You know, um, I, out, I outlanded him. I put him down uh, in, the, in the second round. So I mean, I didn't. I didn't lose to my extra. I lost to somebody's. Uh, I, lo- I lost to somebody's uh, pl- big plan that they had. But you know, as you can see, for some reason, my extra fought in Canada. He got a draw. For some reason, they won't let him lose. He's not earning. He's not earning any of his victories. Somebody, I don't know who he had. I don't know who he's got helping him. I don't know who had this much faith in him, especially after what I did to him. But um, yeah, one of the one of the, definitely probably robbery of the year, biggest robbery ever. That I leave that to the uh, the boxing historians. Does does this specific fight? And I know it's because you're involved that you there's some emotion with it, but does this prove the corruption or cement that always, that, that there is corruption in boxing or corruption in sports in general? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I know it proves that like, you know, some people, they have an agenda for some people. That's the mo- that's what I say about it. I can't say, um, you know, I mean, of course I believe there is corruption in boxing. It's who's, you know, the, you know, you get, you get uh, certain fighters that, that if they bring a lot of money and things like that, of course they might have uh, they might have things in their favor. But like, who is this guy? Gabriel Maestro was an Olympian, like a two-time Olympian. Never actually won an Olympian, never actually medaled. Um, and he just had and he he has a lot of backing for whatever reason. I I don't. Yes, there's there's probably is corruption. I didn't think I I I didn't think that. Um, I didn't think that he was going to be the reason that 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 I didn't that 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 I that I would be have to face that I have to face that. So I mean, you know, Gabriel might Gabriel might like like I said, I beat Gabriel might stray. Uh, you know, the, the judge the judges. I don't know what I don't know what they saw. Uh, you see, Gloria Martinez Rizzo. Uh, she she was she was flagged. She you saw her on Twitter making racist comments before. Yeah. Before the fight, so you know you got when you got that kind of stuff in the play. I, one thing I knew is, well, one thing once I saw the comments, I knew I probably was never going to win on her card. So you know, I to this day I'm just at a loss. Yeah, that was going to be the, the next question I had. It seemed it seemed like because of that decision, it just created a you know a, a, just a shit storm on social media where the one seventeen one ten was just. The most glaring, even though the 113, 114, I didn't have it that close. Right. But the 117, 110 with with a knockdown is what pe- made people start looking into her. They figured out her ties to the WBA. Uh, then along with the racial tweets that just made it just look just, it just compounded. It made it look just that much worse. And I'm surprised that the decision wasn't overturned. Uh, yeah, with the overturn, I got a letter from Minnesota State Athletic Commission, the, the state commission or whatever, that basically said they didn't see any evidence of foul play. Like, in other words, look, the judges saw the fight that they saw, you know. Um, but I mean, all, I think, I mean, the thing is, any judge that has that fight uh, scored for um, for Gabriel Maestri. They I, they would have to explain themselves. Like, what did what did y'all see? What did y'all see him do? Because at the most, I would have given him three rounds, and that's me. That's me. That, that's me trying to be as unbiased as I can. But I've all, at the most, I would have seen him get three rounds, two for sure, maybe, and, and maybe a, maybe a possible. So, um, I mean, debate. I mean. It's it, like, like the, I, right now I'm tripping over my words because like every time I go back to that, uh, go back to that night, August 7, 2021, uh, it just frustrates me because, you know, I work, I work, I worked hard, I worked hard for that opportunity. They called me on 11 days notice to let me know I actually had the opportunity. And, you know, I just messed up their best laid plans and they didn't even, they didn't even do a good job of trying to, to hide what they, you know, who they who they already had uh who they already had planned to to be victorious yeah bro that was the, the worst i've seen and i i've and i haven't been watching boxing that long you know i'm only 36 years old but yeah that's been shit man it it was a boxing lesson it was a boxing clinic 
I appreciate that. You haven't been back in the ring since. It seemed like at, from Lucas San Maria to Maestre, um, there was a year layoff, and then now it's been about a year. Uh, is it that hard? Like, you might be the biggest welterweight. I think you're the biggest welterweight in boxing. Is it that hard for you to get fights? Um, well, yeah, but I mean, before that fight, it was uh, hard for me to secure, um, like fights like with bigger with bigger names in the sport. Um, I think, well, for for one, I'm six foot four, probably probably the tallest welterweight, unless Fedor decided to come down and wait. Um, and for two, I'm southpaw, and then and you know that's basically two that's basically two strikes. You know what I'm saying? If they didn't want to deal with a fighter that tall. Okay, but it, but they certainly don't want to deal with a fighter that tall and that fights out, Paul. And after August, after August, after the fight with Maestre, they found out uh, I'm tall, South Paul, and I can actually fight, you know, and I can actually box. So that's a lot of stuff going against me when you got guys that are um, that are ranked and they're, you know, they're, they're trying to uh, fight for world titles. They can get, they can find easier fights that make, that make more, that make more sense. That'll still help them elevate uh, raise their raise their stock in the game. You know, it's not they don't have to they don't have to fight uh, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Fox, six foot four southpaw Michael Fox. They can find other guys with names that are just as big or bigger, and and, and try their hand with those guys and have a and probably have a better chance at at, uh, at moving forward in the game. You know, um, for for me, we're still working. You know. I'm t- I just turned I turned 26 back in October, so you know I'm just entering my prime. My man strength just start kicking in. Um, so the time I've been spent out the gym, I'm uh, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting faster. You know, um, I'm like so my boxing skills are improving. Even watching that fight, uh, looking back on that fight, everybody says I won, but I'm still looking for things I can do better. And that's what I've been working on since August. Just improving improving my I improved my already good fight skills, my already good fight game. Um, you know, uh, improving, improving the punching power, improving the skill set. That's that's what I've been working on mainly. Like, as you can, like I said, y'all saw the last fight. Took an 11 days notice, so I'm never out the gym. I'm not out the gym now. Um, we just, you know, we we work hard. We might take a day off here and there just to, uh, just just to, just to be kind to the body. But other than that, there's no place I'd rather be than in a gym and in, and in competition. When can we expect you back in the ring? Um, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Actually, you you um, you know, hope, I'm thinking that my next fight is going to be uh, maybe hopefully hopefully it's on a uh, PBC card. But you know, any fans out there that that are watching, man, y'all you know y'all get on y'all get on Twitter. Let everybody know that. Let everybody know that y'all want to see Michael Fox back in the ring. You know. Um, I have my I have my team working to uh, get me back in the ring. Um, PB, PBC probably has their have their own uh, have their own business to do on their end uh, uh, as far as networks and all that. So you know I'm just like I said I'm in the gym. I'm uh, I'm improving. I'm looking to be better than I was last August. You know what I mean the next time y'all see me, I want y'all to I want people to say man y'all thought my A his fight against my A straight was good. Man he came he came back on fire. Are you still signed under um, uh, King's Promotions, or you are a free agent? Um, I'm still signed under uh, King uh, King's Promotions uh, for now. Um, I think uh, you know Marshall um, Marshall still had uh, is working co- still works closely with PVC. He just had uh, Calvin Henderson fight David Morrell, um, so he and you know he has Rice Salim and the uh, smaller weight classes. Typically, they fight on PVC cards. So you know I had Marshall Marshall's Probably Marshall's campaigning for me to get back in the ring. My advisor's campaigning to get back, campaigning to get me back in the ring. Um, you know, I don't think. I think I just need to. Uh, I just need. I just need to get back in that ring, and you know, people want to see. People want to see it. So I'm ready. I'm ready. Assume I'm ready when they call. When whoever it is calls and decides they want, they want to, they want to, uh, they want to see Michael Foss across the ring. Um, I'll be ready. Is there a particular fight that you want? Like, there's a guy like, look, like me and him, that would make an intriguing fight. I think I can beat this dude. Um, if I had to pick somebody, like, the thing is, the way I'm looking at it too is, you know, there's a lot of welterweights 
especially on the PVC side, that are actually coming off of losses. So, you know, I'm one, I'm one of them technically. Te- technically, I lost. But, you know, so it doesn't even have to necessarily be, you know, a guy that's, you know, winning that's on a win streak or whatever. It can be. I don't. That, I don't mind that, but you know, there's guys that, that there's guys that need to get back in the win column, myself included. You got guys like uh, Abel Ramos, Mario Barrios, guys like that. Guys with names. Anybody that has a has a decent that has a name has has some has some uh, has some attention some behind them. One one fight I, in particular I think would be intriguing would be uh, Jamal James, uh, and I'd be willing like to fight him. In, yeah, I'd be willing to fight him. And uh, I'd be willing to fight him in Minnesota. We can we can do it at the Armory. That seems to be where PBC uh, likes to throw a lot of their cars. We could do that at the Armory. That's his house. He only ain't got to go nowhere. You know, he can he can get all, he can uh he can just make the quick drive down the street. We can get we can get that popping. Um, he's a former world champion, and I mean it's it's one of those it's one of those fights that's a uh, that'll be a a good look on either one of our resumes, whoever wins. You know, so. Uh, fighting, you know, I think fighting Jamal James, maybe fighting Jamal James, then maybe fighting a Mario Barrios or Abel Ramos, any either, any of those guys, really. You know, these guys are these these guys have all been in world title fights. Two two of them have been world champions. Abel Ramos has fought for world for world titles. He didn't cross, he didn't uh, get the win, but damn it, he fought your Dennis Ugas. And a lot of people didn't beat haven't beat uh, your Dennis in a long time, so. You know, even even if even if he needs a bounce back fight, you know, your name is Ugas. I wouldn't. I, I like fight him too. too. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, I'm. Look, it's not it's, it's not too many people I'm going to say no to, especially not uh, not now. You know, um, I got twenty five. I got twenty five fights. Twenty six years old. I'm coming into I'm coming into my prime. I've done a lot of work before my prime, trying to see the type of fighter I'm going to become. And and doing that, you got to fight. You got to fight a, a good level of opposition. All right, there's a fight that, as a fan, intrigues me with you, a guy that's about to make his return July 9th. You versus Rashidi Ellis. After you get you fight in uh, this this summer for, for later in the year, I like that fight. Man. Oh, I mean, yeah, like that's an, that's another guy. I mean, you know, um, shout out to Rashidi Ellis and uh, Ronald Ellis. Both of them, you know, I've seen I've seen around, but you know. It's a, it's a fight. It's a, if it's a fight, that, if it's a fight that, that can get made, it makes sense. You know, he, he he's about to make his PBC debut. I mean, he'll they, they won't he'll need he'll need he'll he'll want to he'll probably want to gradually step up his level of opposition. Um, if he if 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 they say yes, I'm not. I, I definitely do. I, it's it's going to be rare that you uh, hear that that you know uh, anybody last name Fox done turn down a fight. You know, we 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 take the fights as we get them. Me and my brother. Okay. Yo, you're a pretty entertaining dude on social media, yo. Like, <laughs> like outside of boxing, is there uh, like another career that you might want to pursue? Maybe some acting, analyst work, what? Oh, I mean, acting maybe one day. But um, the one one thing I'm I, I've been getting involved in this a lot. Do I've been getting into a uh, commentary um, through through like small smaller uh, streaming services like uh, Flow Combat and things like that. Um, I've, I've, uh, some, some club shows, you know, they, they do a lot of stream. They, they're starting to get into streaming. Um, I've done about what, four commentary gigs since my last fight. Just, just, uh, that, that's something I definitely want to get into. That's a, I think that's a, a viable career after, uh, after boxing, like, especially after boxing, maybe during, maybe during, during my career, whatever I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm working now to, you know, become become good at that you know i mean and as far as you know as far as getting into acting they like i said maybe one day I, I wouldn't know the first i wouldn't know the first way of getting into acting but like as far as uh getting being an uh, analyst and commentary right now i'm taking i'm i'm moving in the right direction for that right now i'm you know that's my preparation for uh a, a, a life after boxing a lot after competing i should say but um, I never really want to leave the sport. You know, I, I love this sport a lot. It's easy. It's and it's commentary is easy because I love watching boxing. It's like, you know, I base my sometimes I base my weekends off of, hey, I want to go here. I say, is there a TV there? Because I need. I, I, I plan on catching. I plan on catching Devin Haney. I plan on catching Charlo. I, I haven't missed too many fights. I watched Edgar Belanger this morning because uh, I was a little tired last night. But you know, 
I'm always watching. That's my that's my fun thing to do. Like, what do you do for fun? I play. I play. I might play a little video games, but I be watching fights, man. So being able to watch fights, get a lot of insight on. Uh, you know, I have I have firsthand experience on, as a, as a fighter, and then you know just watching different uh just watching different fighters just fight and do their thing. You know what I mean? I, I that's that's what I love. I love going to fights. Um, anytime they come, especially when they come to the area, anytime they come to, they used to come to the National Harbor a lot. I was always at the fights at the National Harbor. I, I rarely miss those. Um, I done rode up to Philly a, a bunch of times. I watched Julian Williams fight, Stephen Fulton, um, um, Tevin Farmer. Shout out to all those, shout out to all those guys, you know, uh, Philly fighters. But, you know, they always give me love, show a lot of respect and everything. So, you know, I love, I, I love coming, I love coming up there. I be, I be at the, I've, I've done a, I've done comp chat to 2300 Arena before, so a couple times. So that's what I like to do. Okay, I'm a Philly dude, so I already <laughs> know. I can hear, first, I can, first I can hear it in your voice, but you know, yeah. all the all the interviews y'all do, uh, y'all be at y'all be at uh, Bozy Anderson's gym. I, Greg Hackett, he's always Greg Hackett's funny as hell on his. You talk about somebody <laughs> that's funny. Greg Hackett's funny as much. Chin insurance, all that. Uh, him and my brother fought. We've been cool. They fought some years ago. But me and Greg, we've been cool ever since, man. He always show love anytime I, uh, anytime uh, I come up there. Anytime I see him, it's all love, you know. So, so shout out to Greg Haggard. Yeah. Yo, speaking of acting, you look like the ball man boy from uh, Snowfall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just, hey, look. So Lamar Rose just said that to me, man. He just said that to me. Uh, we do seven conditions together. He just said that to me a few weeks ago. I, 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 I must really look like dude. Facts, yo, facts. That that's uh, funny. Uh how many fights? First question, how many fights do you want in 2022? And how many fights can put you back into title contention, in your opinion? Um well, I mean we want we want the year. I mean, we we halfway through the year, so I think realistically, I could if if, if everybody stopped playing, I can get uh I can get two fights, two meaningful fights, and I think uh, the right two fights will put me back in uh, contention. I'm ranked number eight at the uh, in the WBA, but excuse me. But in order to um, in order to keep that spot, I have to uh, I have to stay active. You know what I mean? So you know, two mean two meaningful fights. As I said, the guys I named, I feel like all of those fights are are, are meaningful fights that would keep me keep keep me in the ranking, maybe boost my ranking a little higher. Um, and realistically, with the year one, with, with being halfway through the year, I think I, I think there's still time to get uh, get two fights in before the year is up. Of course, I would have wanted more. I should have uh, I, I should have fought since August. Like we, tr- but it was not for lack of trying though. Even on PBC, PBC has tried have tried to get me back on on their undercards uh, a couple of times. Once in October and once in April on Earl Spence undercard. So um, things just aren't. Things just aren't connecting the way they're supposed to. But you know, in the meantime, like I said, I'm in the gym. I'm in the gym. I'm ready. So when they call, let me try to get two more for the years up, and then hopefully we go into the next year in a in a very good in a very good place. Talk about you know, maybe start talking about world titles again. Generally, with fighters like you, what we often hear is risk versus reward. And you're six four welterweight. Do you feel like you're going to have to move up and wait for guys to? feel comfortable in fighting you um i mean that could be the i mean that could be the case um thing is i just got into welterweight you know i'm i'm uh i think i can wait make a welterweight for the next couple of years to be honest um if i were to have to go to 154 i mean is it going to be i don't know how, how much will really change i mean at six foot four i am i have a height advantage over a lot of weight classes. Really, at six foot four, I have the height of a mid, a, 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 a short heavyweight. You know, the biggest heavyweights in the game are sure. six nine, six seven, and six six. So, you know, me being six, me me being six foot four, I would be a short. I would be considered a short heavyweight. So it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter how many weight classes I go up. I'll probably I'll have a height advantage, and that's what that's the main thing people say. Is I'm not I'm not putting I'm not putting my kid in there with that guy. He's He's seven feet tall. You know, of course they're gonna guess it. So, you know, um, like I said, I, I mean, I can make forty-seven. I mean, and, and 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 fighters don't typically go up and wait until they can't make it no more. I shouldn't have to be forced out of a weight class because people people are uncomfortable with my height. Come on, man. 
Valeu.